Ahead of us again, the launch control center with the firing ropes. Now a Tsuna shuttle or years ago Saturn V's would clear the tower. All that command and control would switch to Houston, Texas or mission control. The reason? Well, we built this place during the height of the Cold War. We thought it was too juicy a target for Soviet missiles. Wanted to spread things out a bit. Lyndon Baines Johnson was the vice president and he was placed in charge of finding somewhere to move. And for some reason came up with Texas. Being a Texan maybe has something to do with that. But it is rocket science the way it switches over. When we leave you at the Saturn Center, they've actually rebuilt one of these firing rooms. And they have the original consoles they used in Apollo oh. wired in. We upgraded them now several times for shuttle and for the future. They'll take you through a simulated launch of a Saturn V from this viewpoint. We even hired some of the folks that worked here to get the effects right, rattling the walls and windows. Of course, in about four and a half or five years, we have a much more powerful rocket scheduled to take off, so that would be worth coming back to see. Excuse me, was Space Cowboys filmed here? Uh, mostly Houston, a little bit here. The left side firing room number four is uh, the one that handled the last shuttle flights. Um, the far side number one is being reworked for the space launch system, and the two in the middle actually been pulled out completely. When we pass the bushes on the left over the water where the flag's flying, the blue box on the ground next to it is the back side of the countdown clock. To the right of that, there are the press buildings. I see CBS, I think. Walter Cronkite. Now the Saturn V you're going to see soon uh, used to be laying out in front of the VAD getting rusty and that's why we had it restored. But also in there, a real command and service module, unflown and shiny to get near, and a real lunar lander hanging from its hard points in the ceiling over the restaurant. Restaurant sounds good. Of course, what would Apollo be without moon rocks? And there are several under plexiglass to look at, but if you want to touch a piece of the moon, go back to the command and service module. There's a column with lights and openings, and you can reach in and touch a piece of Luna. It's also the Banana Creek viewing area. This is where the astronaut families and VIPs would come to watch the launch. Same distance, a little different angle. Again, the crawler transporter being upgraded in high bay two of the VAV. And we'll go past the outdoor one up ahead on the right. We'll see it on the way back too. And the crawler remaining as is is just up ahead on our right. Further ahead on the right under the overpass, a waterway, and sometimes alligators or manatee hang out, but today I'll bet nothing. Good look. the other side too on the way back. The other side of the road though has the blue line of the towway. It curves out ahead and meets up at the south end of our 15,000 foot shuttle landing facility. So crews would have their last few minutes of their missions there. We're coming to the end of our mission. We'll be leaving with the Saturn Center. Now folks, you can stay here as long as you wish because buses come by for you now every 10 minutes to take you back to the complex. So I'm afraid you won't be with us again. 
On behalf of Tom, myself, Paul, I do want to thank you for joining us, getting a little closer view than most folks get, especially with Atlantis. But do enjoy the rest of your stay with us, keep looking up to that future, and thanks again for visiting here at Kennedy Space Center.